What is going on guys, it's Waffle here, and welcome back to some more Planet Zoo. Now, last time we left off, we beat the Madagascan Simian Conservation Project, and now we're going to be moving on to Bear Essentials, Panda Park. Panda Park is Bernard Goodwin's newest zoo, built from the ground up to celebrate the panda in all its forms. This park represents an unparalleled opportunity to show the world just how much the Goodwin Foundation knows about breeding animals on the cusp of endangerment, so don't squander it. So it looks like we're going to be taking care of some pandas that are, of course, no longer endangered, but, you know, they're on the cusp of endangerment. So it's still a pretty big weight on our shoulders here, you guys. Anyways, let's start this new scenario and let's take care of some pandas, shall we? Ah, pandas. <laughs> They're my daughter's favorite animal. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that if ever there was an animal which has captured the public's imagination, it's pandas. Oh, well, that's assuming you ignore cats and dogs, obviously. It'll take more than a cute bear to knock them off of the top spot. <laughs> oh, but did you know, thanks to the incredible conservation work that's being done in China and around the world, pandas are no longer endangered. <laughs> Amazing! That said, they're still considered vulnerable. So, this zoo is extraordinarily lucky and honored to be part of that conservation effort. It really speaks to our reputation, a reputation that you're going to be in charge of maintaining, along with all the uh, general maintaining, too. I really can tell you how important the welfare of those pandas is. Oh, wait, I can. <laughs> It is vitally important. The eyes of the world are on you, my friend. Although, <laughs> perhaps more pressingly, the eyes of Nancy are on you too. <laughs> Uh-oh. <laughs> Welcome to China. This is Bernie's brand new panda celebration zoo. So new, in fact, that it's not quite finished. But we'll deal with that later. First, let's take a tour of the zoo. All right, let's find the uh, giant panda habitat, it looks like. Let's see where we're we going to find this. Probably, it's probably going to be easier to go down to like a zoo and then go to animals, habitats. And here it is right, oh, I thought uh, new panda habitat, is that it? No, giant panda, there it is down there. Uh, well, it looks like we could just click that to go there, but uh, this is another way we can go there, right? So here we are. Obviously the giant pandas are the main attraction for this zoo and luckily for us, we have one which was born just a few days ago. Let's go and have a look at it. Oh, look at these pandas. Go on, don't be shy. Select the panda cub. Right, let's go find this panda cub. Oh, doesn't it just warm the cockles of your heart? So cute. Did you know that giant pandas, or Ailuropoda melanoleuca, if we're being formal, are the only entirely herbivorous bears? They can actually eat up to 38 kilos of bamboo a day. <laughs> Not that surprising, given that they'll spend up to 14 hours a day chomping away. I don't imagine this little fluff ball has that kind of appetite yet, though. Oh, no. I just got word from one of our keepers that a sable antelope was placed into a habitat without going through quarantine first, and that they're displaying signs of disease. We'll have to move them into quarantine to stop the infection from spreading to the other animals. To do that, Go to the highlighted habitat, find the infected animal, and then select them to bring up their information panel. Good. Now click move and then transfer them into quarantine. I've highlighted the quarantine facility in the zoo for you. Is this actually one that's sick? I don't know. I'm not seeing another antelope over here, so I suppose it is. Okay, well, let's just uh, quarantine the sick antelope, so let's move. And there it is right there. There's quarantine. Okay, let's move it over here. Oh, phew. That's a relief. Now that we've stopped the infection from spreading any further, we need to build a vet surgery so the antelope can be treated and then returned to his habitat. I've already highlighted where I'd like you to build it, so why don't we head over there? In order to build the vet surgery, click on Facilities, Staff Facilities, and then Vet Surgeries. All right. Uh, staff facilities, vet surgeries. Oh my gosh, this thing keeps popping up. Vet surgeries and veterinary surgery. So let's click on the building, add it to the group. And uh, I guess just lower it. Boom, there you go. Let's see if we rotate it. 
Uh, there we go. Okay. Nice. That's the job. Vet surgeries play a very important role in a zoo, as they're the only places that vets can treat the animals. Once there's room for the antelope, the vet will pick them up from quarantine and bring them to the surgery. Hmm. Yes, diseases can spread through a habitat quite easily, especially if the water inside it isn't being cleaned regularly. As it happens, I just got a report that one of our water treatment facilities has broken down and the water in the flamingo and saltwater crocodile habitats has gotten dirty. I've highlighted the water treatment facility for you, so you should go and check it out. Click on the water treatment facility to bring up its information panel. Yes, I don't think you need a degree in mechanics to tell that this thing's thoroughly banjaxed. Click call mechanic to get them to come over and fix it for us. So, just to explain, water treatment facilities work in a similar manner to power sources, in that they have a radius of influence around them. That means, any body of water which is even partly within that radius will be cleaned automatically. Also, like power sources, if they get damaged, that radius of influence will shrink, meaning that it might stop cleaning water sources which were only just within its reach. If you want to check how much of your zoo is covered by your water treatment facilities, then there's a heat map you can use to see the coverage. That way, you can quickly spot problem areas and rectify the issue. All right. Good work. Now that the water treatment facility has been repaired, the water will be cleaned up in two shakes of a lamb's tail. <laughs> you can also use mechanics to repair power facilities, transport rides, spins, benches, signs, and, as you already know, habitat barriers. Now, I'll be honest, I'm still a little worried about that disease scare we had, so I think we should do some research into it. Doing research into a disease can help prevent future outbreaks of it. And even if we do have an outbreak, it'll make the disease much less potent. I'd like you to start some research into border telosis. Disease research can be found in vet research, so head over to your research center and get one of the vets researching it. Hmm. Now where are we going to do this down? Oh, yep, scroll down and we find uh, border telosis over here, so click on that. Or uh, drag a vet over to it. So, uh, Tommy Presley, you're going to be researching that. Lovely job. Once that research is complete, I expect we'll send that disease packing in no time. All right, looks like we got the bronze star there too. Awesome. Whew, that was a close run thing with those antelopes. <laughs> I dread to think what might have happened if you hadn't got them into quarantine as quickly as you did. Fast thinking there. We had a horrible outbreak of viral gastroenteritis here at Goodwin House. Although, luckily, <laughs> that was just limited to me and my wife. Uh, if that's what, uh, I think it is, then, uh, <laughs> that's a little bit too much information, golly. <laughs> Anyways, now I have to research, uh, just a memento or so. Oh, gosh, it's, it's snowing! I thought it was, like, a weird graphical glitch for a second, but it just started snowing just randomly right there. That's pretty cool. Anyways, it said I, I need to, oh, what's this? Shark Bart 16 is visiting my park. That's pretty cool. Anyways, begin researching just a memento. Hmm, so, how would I do that? I uh, go over here to the facility and, uh... View workshop. And finally, assign a mechanic to research souvenir shops by dragging and dropping them onto it. I can't wait to see what they come up with. Okay, so souvenir shop, where is that going to be? There it is down there at the very bottom. So we have mechanics, just like the vets, can research, like, you know, diseases and, and, and animal stuff. We can get mechanics to research, like, buildings. So that's pretty cool. And, like, uh, different, different structures and stuff like that. Food shops, shelters, and souvenir shops. So, uh, I don't know how to pronounce this person's name, but you're going to be researching the, uh, souvenir shops. That research will take a little while, so let's have a look at something else in the meantime. Because we've had some good news! Ooh, what is it? It turns out that we're allowed to adopt more giant pandas! The authorities have given us three females to help with our breeding programme. Even so, I'm sure you know how notoriously difficult it is to get pandas to breed, so we'll have to be patient. Our current giant panda habitat is full to the brim, but luckily we've already got another habitat ready to go. But before we move our new pandas in, they'll need to go through quarantine. Of course, we can't do that until we've accepted them. <laughs> so open up Animal Trading and go into the Animal Reward section. All right. Well, I did say it started snowing, but I didn't even notice. But like the buildings, the, the plants, and even the, the small little structures and stuff, 
have little bits of snow on them. So that's kind of cool. I didn't even notice that bit of detail until now. Well, let's go uh, accept the animals in the animal trading. And this is where we get them from animal rewards. Okay. Just click transfer to animal storage next to each of the pandas, and then they'll be sent there. All right. Select all those and transfer to animal storage. Finally, we can send them from animal storage to quarantine. To do that, just select them in animal storage, then click send to zoo, and then click on the quarantine facility in the zoo. Don't worry, I've highlighted it for you so you can find it easily. Yeah, I, I kind of figured it out. <laughs> you guys might notice I'm like one step ahead of her, basically. Like by the time she's done explaining something, I've already got it done. So anyways, just take them over here to quarantine. While we wait for them to clear quarantine, you should set up their new habitat so they feel at home in there. I'll also need you to bring over one of the male pandas from our other habitat, but because without him, we're not going to have much of a breeding program, are we? <laughs> so go on, move him over and get everything set up for your pandas. I didn't even notice, but yeah, there's like people up here in this in this top building area, and they could just kind of look over the edge and, and see the pandas like we saw earlier. Yeah, look at this, there's a panda there. We saw a bunch of them feasting on some like water. Here's like a feeding area over here with like watermelons and stuff. Anyways, we need to move someone from over here and uh, move into a different panda habitat to get them breeding and stuff. But right now I'm not seeing them, so I need to go to the zoo thing to... Oh wait, there they are right there. Jeez, they're all eating all the watermelons and stuff. So let's find an uh, adult, 9.3 years. Here's a male. I guess we'll move uh, the, one of these guys over. He looks pretty big. And his fertility, where do I check that out on this one? That looks like he's pretty good on fertility, you guys. All right, let's uh, move him over to the other location, so move. Move that giant panda over to this one. There we go, delivery scheduled. And now, while that one's coming over here, we need to set this area up, because it is it is pretty bare and empty. I know it's kind of dark right now, because it's nighttime. But uh, yeah, there's like nothing over here. It's basically just an empty shelf, so definitely wanna want to set this up with stuff. And it's telling us right now, feeding station, food enrichment, toy enrichment, and increased terrain welfare to 90%. Increase plants to welfare to 90%, so we'll have to do that here in just a bit. I'll have to wait until the actual pants is here, that way I can see uh, how, how the ratings and stuff are. But uh, we're going to need a feeder, so let's go to the filter. Uh, yeah, it's, it's even showing me like tooltips, yeah, go to filter and stuff. But yeah, I've, I've got it down, uh, especially because I think because, you know, I played the previous games, Planet Coaster, Jurassic World Evolution, so a lot of things are similar. What in the world am I looking for here? Species, that's, that's what I'm looking for. Giant panda, let's go, there you go, giant panda. And let's get a feeding station for them. So, uh, uh, which one do we have back there? I don't know. Probably like one of these, honestly. Uh, feeding platform. I think this is it. Yeah. All right. Well, this is kind of a hilly area here. So maybe we could put it, uh, right here at the top of the hill. There we go. So we have a feeding station there. Then we're going to have like food enrichment and stuff. So let's see what we could do for that. And then there's like a, like toy enrichment. So I guess we can get a rubbing pillar. We could put that like right here. There you go. There's a rubbing pillar. Roller feeder. I think that might count for food. So let's. Let's put that over here by the water. There you go. Alright. Oh gosh, the terrain's like... Uh, what if I got rid of that? Okay, I don't know what to do. Anyways, uh, if I want to get rid of that and demolish it... Whatever, we, we can keep it right there. It's kind of a dumb looking terrain. <laughs> kind of got messed up right there. I wonder if the panda's back over here. Oh, yep, there it is right there. Okay, so now we can select him and see how we're doing on... Uh, okay, yeah, plants and all that kind of stuff. So temperate in Asia for nature. So let's go over here. Let's go to biome. Let's do temperate. And continent. Let's do Asia. So there we go. Let's pick some. Oh man, look at these beautiful flowers. Of course, it's nighttime right now. I can't really see them too well. But here's like a pretty good. Ah oh, man, I wish I could switch it to daytime, but I guess I could speed through because it seems like it's about. Oh yep, yep, yep. Seems like it's morning time right now, so the sun is coming out, and we'll be able to see a little bit easier. But there's like this this strip of. Oh, and then there's like bamboo trees and stuff. That's going to be cool. And he's heading over to the feeder thing, but of course there's no hiking food there yet. <laughs> so that kind of sucks. But uh, over by the over by the. Yeah, over by the, the water, we should probably put some of these bamboo trees. Let's do that. There we go, just scatter these around here. There we go, nice. I like that. All right, maybe even uh, do another strip of them, like right here on the edge of that. Or like right here. Or like right there. There we go, nice, I like that. Okay, might want to stop the slow down, or slow down the, the fast four, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> uh, slow that down. Let's go, uh, let's just check these other plants and stuff. Ooh, look at these plants. That's going to be pretty cool. There was a strip of them, like, right here. Yeah, we could, we could put this strip here. That'd be pretty cool. Put them, like, right here. There we go. All right. Oh, gosh. And I guess we could do the same thing on this side. There we go. Just kind of put up a strip of them over here. Just kind of... Oh, gosh. Yeah, now it's... Now it's daytime. 
Let's see if I can slip this in like right here. There we go. Nice. We have pretty decent coverage so far. It's almost where it needs to be. Let's see if there's anything else here. Yeah, there's beech tree. Ooh. Let's get this. Let's put this big strong beech tree like right there. Beach tree three. Let's put this one. Oh, look at this big one right here, you guys. Wow, look at that thing. Of course, it's going to be blocking a lot of the, a lot of that building there. So maybe I'll move, maybe I'll switch these two trees. Let's let's switch these two trees. So let's move this one to right there. Move this one to oh to this side. Actually, uh, yeah, put it like right here. Yeah, between the water. There we go. That way, it's not blocking blocking the building too much. Let's move this tree right here. There we go. And it is kind of blocking the building, but not quite as much as the other one. Yeah, that, that makes it a little bit better right there. So let's go back to nature. Beach tree number one. Yeah, and then there's a small one right there to bounce that out right there. I like that. Big tree right next to a tiny tree and a medium tree over here. Uh, might be able to fit another one of those beach tree ones. Maybe put that like right there. All right. I like that. Kind of want to get a bunch more bamboo because, you know, pandas and whatnot, right? <laughs> Let's get some, uh, some bamboo. There you go. Just kind of scatter them by the water just like I did earlier. There we go. And uh, is there any more? No, there's no more water on this side. There is on this side, though, so I suppose, uh, there we go. A little bit of bamboo there, a little bit right there. Nice. Nice. Right, check him on the, uh, the panda now. Where is he at? I don't know if I have to look into this to find out where he is, but uh, I assume the plant coverage is fine now. He might be in this little tunnel that I saw. Oh, yep. There he is right there sleeping. This is where they're sleeping, I suppose. The beddings and stuff. So let's check him on them. Uh, environment? Looks like we're good on plants. It, I think we need to get up to 90%. We're at 91 right now, which is great. Great plant coverage. Uh, some of these plants are interfering with them, though. So we do need to get rid of some of these, like, North America-type trees. So where is this one at? Uh, it does highlight it whenever I hover over it. But, uh... Oh, they're up there. Okay. I can't I, I can't get rid of those. Or I can, but, like, I don't want to. Because they're a part of the actual, like, structure up there, you know? But if they're... Like in the enclosure itself, then I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna get rid of it. But right now it doesn't seem like there's anything inside the actual enclosure right now, so I don't think we need to worry about that. Terrain, we need to get uh, more short grass and less long grass. So basically need to get someone in here and uh, just mow the lawn right now, right? Let's get some terrain going. Let's get rid of the long grass and get ourselves some short grass. There you go. Let's get that on the screen so I can see it easily. And there's our panda friend right there. Might need to get uh, someone out here to refill that feeder thing with some heckin' food. Let's get rid of some of the long grass here. Blaze it with some short grass. Get some guy to just mow the lawn over here. And there's a lot over here, I'm sure. So let's get all this turned into short grass. And eventually, hopefully, we're going to be good on our terrain rating, you guys. Thankfully, we'll... Oh. Our new female pandas have been given a clean bill of health. You'd best move them into the new habitat so they can settle in. And I hope you've made their habitat as comfy as possible. Because animals will only breed if they're happy. All right. Well, this should be a pretty good enclosure for him. I'm doing a pretty decent job. Just kind of getting rid of some of the long grass and getting some shorter grass in here. And there's still a lot of long grass somewhere, and I'm just not seeing it right now. Maybe it's like behind the building or something like that. I don't know. But uh, now, now we need to move them over the the pandas from the quarantine area to here, and we should be fine. But I don't know how much more long grass there is. Oh, there we go. Okay, we're good. We're good. This is perfect for him now. All right. Well, now we need to move the pandas from quarantine over to where is it? Here it is right here. Let's move over to quarantine. Don't select the actual building, golly. <laughs> Let's uh, go to transformer. No. Let's go to quarantine. There we go. Select the pandas there. Move. And we're going to move them over to the new enclosure we just set up. Oh, bless. I think they'll be really happy in there. Fingers crossed we'll see some lovely new cubs sooner rather than later. Right. While they're being delivered, we'd better get on with something else. Oh, dear me. There's never any time to rest when you're running a zoo, is there? Well, unless you hit the pause button. Okay, I think it's time I taught you all about work zones. I know, they don't sound as interesting as the animals, but trust me, they're ever so useful. You see, work zones are a way of making sure that your staff concentrate on specific habitats or tasks within the zoo so they aren't wandering off elsewhere when it's time to feed the animals or the like. So let's start by creating a new work zone and then assigning a keeper to it so that they know to look after the new pandas. To do that, go into the zoo section, then click on staff and then work zones. All right, let's go down to zoo. Uh, oh gosh. 
Uh, research complete. Looks like we got the, uh, what was it? Hat not Hats Fantastic, but, uh, I think it was, like, just a memento or something like that that they wanted me to research, so hopefully we got that one, right? There we go. All right. Anyways, gotta go down to zoo and then go to staff work zones. There we go. Now, click on new work zone. New work zone. To set up your new work zone, I'll need you to select the highlighted habitat gate, staff room, and keeper hut. Oh, and don't forget to name it something useful. <laughs> Once you're done, just go ahead and exit the work zone creator. All right, it seems like we're good here. So now we can exit out of this. Now let's hire a new keeper and assign them to our new work zone. We don't want them getting distracted by other goings on in the zoo. Go on, hire one. All right, hire a new keeper and just put them down pretty much wherever so. Then click on your new keeper to bring up their information panel and go to their employment tab. Employment? At the bottom, you can assign them to your new work zone from the drop-down menu. So where is that? Work zone 10? Yeah, I don't think I named it there, so there you go. Work zone 10. Now that we've got our lovely new Just a Memento shop designed, you should build one of them near the zoo's exit. That way, the guests won't miss it on their way out, and we won't miss out on their money. <laughs> All right, well, let's place that down. Where was it? Uh, oh. Guest facilities, just a memento is a souvenir shop, so merchandise. And it's just this uh, this empty little shell thing, so it's like the building. And let's try and uh, place it correctly, so let's lower it down. And I think uh, about right there. Oh, that's ever just so wonderful, that is. Up. Anyway, I'm just off for a moment, but I'm sure I'll have some more jobs for you to look at shortly. All right, there you go. We got the Silver Star. Very nice. We're just blazing right through this. Oh, those pandas look just adorable. <laughs> I can see why people keep foolishly forgetting that they're wild bears. And good work on that new gift shop branding. Just a memento. <laughs> Very clever. Much better than our old overpriced gifts branding. <laughs> I'm all for truth in advertising, but it was perhaps oh a little <laughs> on the nose. Back as promised. Right. I'd like you to increase the number of different species in the zoo. Now, you can find out what species are already in your zoo by going into the zoo section and then into the animals area. And if you're wondering how you're going to fit them all in, then mixed species habitats are a great way to save space and create interesting habitats. Just make sure to check the Zoopedia to find out which species enjoy living together. E.g. don't mix lions with antelopes. <laughs> all right, well, it looks like, uh, oh gosh, someone's in a box right now. Uh, unbox the animal. There you go. I don't know why you're in a box over here. Yeah, I don't know. They're, they're like randomly becoming like boxed up last time as well. So I have no idea. It just happened randomly right there too. So that kind of sucks. And it looks like, uh, it looks like mechanic research is complete over here. Let's see what we got. Another, uh, another souvenir shop there. So that's good. And event research is complete. And it looks like we have another, it looks like we're fully researched on board of Telosis. Okay. So there you go. Continue. And now we need to get, how many, how many, uh, did she say? I need to get, I forget. Uh, 18 species in the zoo. I don't even know what she even said, but just like last time, yeah, we need to get three more species. I guess one sheep way we can kind of cheese that out is, uh, getting some exhibits like we did last time with, like, the frog and stuff. Uh, we could do that once, but I guess if we do it just like last time, we can, we can make one, one exhibit. Maybe we can slip that in, like, right here next to them, just a memento or something like that. I don't know. Uh, oh, yeah, there are exhibits right here, too. So it wouldn't really, uh, yeah, there's two exhibits right there, so... Or four exhibits, like right here at the very front. Or, uh, yeah, this is the front. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I don't, I don't think we need a another random one, like right there next to the souvenir shop, right? But we could have one exhibit, or like she said earlier, build a, uh, a, a habitat that has multiple species inside of it. You know, of course, not not mixing up, uh, you know, antelopes with lions, like she said as well. So need to be mindful of what critters we kind of mix together. May, might not want to put. Too many things in this uh, crocodile enclosure. If anything, <laughs> might just keep it as crocodiles over here. So let's uh, keep that as that. Well, let's just look around real quick and see what we're dealing with in terms of uh, what, what habitats we have. But right now, it's it's raining and it's nighttime right now, so I can't even really see. So I may just pause the recording real quick, wait until it turns to daytime, and uh, I'll see you guys here in a bit. Where we'll try and get three more species set up here in the park. So I'll see you guys here in just a bit. Alright guys, I'm back, and it is daytime now, so I, I looked around already, 
while I was off camera. And I didn't really find anywhere where we could like build a new enclosure, like a like basically an empty plot or anything like that. There are areas kind of like like right here ish where we can kind of kind of mess around with the terrain and clean out all the trees and stuff. We can build a, an empty plot there. But then I remembered that. Yeah, the uh, I forgot what her name was, but the old woman, she said, uh, yeah, you can look at the Zoopedia and actually see like what animals are like friendly with each other. And while I was looking at like the different habitats, I noticed these tapers over here coexisting with uh, these Okapi creatures. I don't know if that's how you pronounce it, but there you go. <laughs> but yeah, I, I guess we could we could do that as well instead of building like a brand new enclosure specifically for one creature. We can kind of get uh, maybe maybe find another enclosure. Maybe, maybe not this one. Although this wouldn't necessarily be a bad enclosure. It's just that I'm pretty sure these guys would probably have a problem with the population being too high. And I don't know where I could check that right now. I guess that's fine there for the social there. And adult population is right online, so we don't we don't need to get another one of those. I suppose if we look up the uh, Okapi and the uh, the Baird's Taper, I think this is over here, and uh, and look it up in the Zoopedia, which I think yeah here it is right here. And we have Ardvark at the very top. African Buffalo. I don't even know what we could choose from, so I suppose we can go to Animal Trading. See what we have here. We have a uh, giant turtle. I don't know if we have these in the park. I should definitely see what we already have, especially, yeah, because we're going to be getting new critters and stuff, right? So we have a saltwater crocodile, sable antelope, red panda, uh, new panda habitat. That's the new one for the breeding. So we have two giant panda habitats, a giant or Japanese macaque, greater flamingo, gharial, Chinese. OK, so I think we already have. I think I saw that in the animal trading. So we already have that. And of course, Bears Taper and Okapi and uh, Giant Tortoise there. So it looks like we already have the tortoise and the pangolin thing. <laughs> so we don't need either of those. Uh, Black Wildebeest. Ooh, interesting. I don't know if we had one of those. Let me check back over here. Habitats. Black Wildebeest. Or just Wildebeest or something like that. I do not see that here. Let's look, let's look it up in the Zoopedia. Where is that thing? B for Black Wildebeest. Oh, there it is right there. Black Wildebeest. Natural Habitat. How do I check the... Uh, Mr. Status, Interspecies Enrichment. This is probably it right here. Sable Antelope. I think we have those, right? So I might want to get one of these Black Wildebeests and put it in the same enclosure as the Sable Antelope. Uh, common Ostrich, Common War Dog, Plain Zebra, Thompson's Gazelle, Spring Bok, Reticulated Giraffe, and African Buffalo. So it seems like they, they get along and even uh, have some benefits from being in the same enclosure as those critters. So let me find out where that uh, sabled something, Sable Antelope, where is this at? It's, uh, this enclosure right here. Seems relatively small. Oh, wait, yeah, there's only one of these, right? Yeah, there's only one of these. Uh, let's actually look at its stuff. Oh, it's like hopping around and stuff. Adult population, yeah, it can have more. We can definitely get more, but it seems like it's fine on social. I kind of want to see if we get a wildebeest over here. Will it, will it be fine? I guess we could find out. Let's go to animal tree. Oh, God. Oh, God. There you go. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Probably going to cut all that out because that, that might get some heckin' uh, epileptic people like super duper freaking out about that. Uh, this animal is being adopted for cash. It cannot be re released in the wild. So we cannot release it in the wild, but I don't think it really matters too much right now, to be quite honest. So let's adopt it for actual cash instead of a... Uh, what are these things called again? Conservation credits. So $396. Sure, let's get the Black Wildebeest, send it to the zoo. And, uh, oh yeah, we need to send it over to the... Where is it at? Here it is right here. Quarantine. So we need to... There you go. Delivery is scheduled. So see what else there is. So we have that kind of down. So that's going to be one species. We need to get three more or two more species. Three more in total. So yeah, because we have a. Oh wait, what in the world? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought I thought the number went down. <laughs> but yeah, we have 15 right now. We're going to have 16. And then of course we have to get two more after this uh, wildebeest comes here and goes through the. Uh... Ooh, there's a black bear there. I don't think we have that. Here's the warthog. We saw that earlier. I think it can it can get along with the uh, with the other critters there, you guys. Let's look at the. Uh... Yeah, common warthog. I don't know if that's what we saw in animal trading. Let's go back there. Yeah, it was. Hmm, I suppose we could do it. We can get this one for uh, 16 of those credits. I don't think we have this yet. Let's look in the uh, the zoo here. I do not think we have common warthog. Just skimming through that. So let's, let's go to animal trading. Let's get that common warthog for some uh, 16 of these credits. So boom, send the zoo and put in uh, quarantine. Sure, there you go. So we gotta we gotta put it in quarantine just to make sure it's ready to kind of release into the uh, into the zoo, and uh, I guess we'll see if we need more of those later. But I doubt anything really gets along with the black bear. That's probably going to need its own enclosure. I don't know, if Prat Pratyush. I don't know how to pronounce that. 
I don't know if uh, that would get along with anything. I doubt it. Seems like it wouldn't, <laughs> you know. Oh, greater flamingo. I think we already have flamingos, if I remember correctly, from this zone here. So let's go check it again. Uh, yeah, we have greater fl flamingos there, so don't need to worry about that. Oh, gosh. Quarantine passed. Hey, someone passed the quarantine. Who is it? Uh, the, not the war dog, but that thing. What is it? I don't know what it's called, but let's move that thing over to the, I think it's this, right? Yes, this enclosure right here. Ba-boom. Delivery scheduled. And what's this enclosure? Uh, I have no idea. Armadillos? Uh, pangolins. I have no idea what actually that is. But of course we can always read about it because we have the, uh, the Zoopedia. We learn more about these animals. I don't know if it actually tells you how to pronounce it, though, but I'll probably just mess it up for everything, right? Uh, it does tell you a pretty good amount of information about the wildebeest. It even tells you how they're doing, like, population-wise. Least concern, 18,000 population in the wild. What if we go to, like, a buffalo? Near threatened, 830,000 in the wild. That seems, like, really high to be near threatened, but I don't know. Maybe it depends on its habitat. Cheetah, 6,700 vulnerable. Ooh. What about an ostrich? Oh, I guess there's just so many of them that they don't even uh, they don't even know how many are in the wild. <laughs> least concern right there. Common war dog, 250,000 least concern. Uh, oh gosh, looks like the wildebeest has arrived in the zoo. So uh, is it going to be? Is it going to pass quarantine? Hopefully it is. Let's go to the. Or oh, hold on, wildebeest. That's the one that was over here, right? The warthog's in the. Uh, okay, so we have we have the wildebeest right there. Now we have 16 critters. Yep. All right. Wait, what? We have 17? Oh, yeah, we have the uh, the Warthog as well. It's on its way over here, too. So, uh, or it's already in the park. It's in quarantine right now. So, we're at 17. Do I want to find another one that can fit in with these these creatures we already have? Maybe. I guess, I guess yeah, I do want to see the Warthog. Check his stats. See how he's doing. He's doing really well in everything on welfare, so that's great. How is he doing, like, a uh, adult population? He, he wants at least another one. Maybe two more. So, let's definitely get another one. Which one is this male? So let's get let's let's try and get a female just because hey when I, I don't even know if we can I don't I, did, I only saw one of these guys so that kind of sucks but uh, yeah I'm not seeing any right now is there a search here uh, I don't think there's like a search where I, oh refresh list that's always good let's do that see if we can get another uh, oh, oh oh wildebeest we got another one right there and it's a male not that bad I'll take it though just I'm like eh, we're we're probably not going to breed these guys together so I don't think we need a female right now I think we're going to get the wildebeest right here just because it's a male and I do need it to kind of get the adult population rating of that guy up so send him over to quarantine make sure he's cleared of any like diseases or whatever uh oh gosh why is this invalid oh there you go I had to select the actual building and I was selecting the uh, the little shell of the building anyways uh, oh yeah how is the let's go back to quarantine how is that warthog doing can I actually see it's like progress I don't think so I can't really see any progress there uh oh god uh, I accidentally put the warthog. I must have misclicked. <laughs> I accidentally put the warthog in that enclosure instead of the uh, quarantine. There we go. Golly. <laughs> no wonder I had the uh, the 17 out of 18 already. I thought he was in uh, quarantine, but he's not. Jeez. <laughs> or she's not. Anyways, yeah, let's send it over to quarantine. Make sure it's nice and clean. Doesn't have any diseases or whatever else. And uh, let's go back to animal training and see if there's anything else there that we may be able to bring to the park. Peafowls. So we have flamingos. I don't know if they're going to get along with peafowls. I assume they would. I don't know why they wouldn't, but do we already have peafowls here? I don't know. Let's scroll down. We have a lot of flamingos. Holy heck. I don't, I'm not seeing peafowls here, you guys. Let's go to the Zoopedia and see where is flamingo on this. Are we going to get a, a like like a buff if they're in the same? Greater flamingo doesn't benefit from sharing space with other creatures or species. So I suppose it doesn't matter if we if we maybe we can get a peafowl and it, it wouldn't. I think it's over here, right? Yeah, here are the flamingos over here. Perhaps we can get some peafowls over here. I guess we could. Like, like, let's let's check. Enrichment. Yeah, we need to get their enrichment up, but of course that's going to be a little bit later, I believe. If we, uh, yeah, the next one's going to be to get the habitat overall welfare to 90%. We're we'll going to have to do uh, enrichment for all these creators. But if I look at like, uh, let's see, social. Yeah, social's fine here. So I, I guess we can get some peafowls. I guess we're going. To, we're probably going to need like a few of them to be quite honest. So let's go down to peafowl. Here's right here, Indian peafowl. We get a beautiful male. Let's see if we can actually adopt or rescue any with the uh, conservation credits. I don't see any right now. I do. That kind of sucks. But we can get a. Let's, let's definitely get a male. At least one. 4.4 years. Sure. There you go. Adopt that bad boy. And he's in the trade center right now. So uh, we'll, we'll worry about that a little bit later. Let's, let's try and figure out if we need another one of these. Like, female. Let's definitely get a, a female. So that one's 4.4 years old. 
Let's definitely get one that's kind of around its age, I suppose. 3.8? Sure, there you go. It's only 158 micaroons. Boom, there you go. All right, so we have two beef owls now. We should have all the species covered uh, once we send them over to animal trading. Let's go to animal storage. Select all, and let's move to quarantine. And quarantine, there you go. All right, now let's go, let's go back to quarantine over here, and let's see. How are the animals doing in quarantine? Okay, I'm looking at quarantine right now. Looks like the warthog is, like, I don't know, three quarters the way done. Maybe it's three quarters the way being cleared there. I don't know what that little progress bar right there means. But I suppose we just have to play the waiting game and wait for them to get cleared. And then, of course, we'll have another warthog, or, uh, we'll have another, uh, wildebeest, I think. And we'll be able to put it in that one enclosure. It's just that I, I, I'm so concerned about it being so small, you know? But it is raining right now, and it is dark. So I suppose we could use this time to kind of check on these guys over here. This, this has 100% enrichment. Let's check up on the actual wildebeest over here, or wherever that is. Here it is, right here. How's he doing? He's doing pretty well on neutral. Hold on. Where is, like, the food on this one? Food enrichment. Okay, it has a grazing ball, so that's good. Where is the... Oh, there's, like, a, a stud book here. That's kind of interesting. Seems like he's fine with the hard shelter and the terrain rating. It's just that there's a little bit not too much gra long grass. We might want to get a little bit more of that just to kind of help out his rating there. And uh, in terms of this one... Seems like it doesn't matter if it gets even more long grass. So, hey, it doesn't matter too much. I suppose we can add a little bit more long grass over here to help them both out. So, let's go to terrain. It is nighttime right now and raining. So, of course, it's going to be really hard to see for you guys. But, there we go. Get ourselves a bunch of long grass like that. Check him on the wildebeest now. He wants a little bit more. And looks like he's fine. All right. That's good. 100% on terrain. 100% on hard shelter. How is the uh, antelope over here doing? Let's check on yours. 100% hard shelter, 100% on terrain. Great! Awesome! So, all we have to- Oh, look at that, he's playing with that ball or whatever that thing is. I have no idea what that thing actually is. It's like a weird kettlebell looking thing. <laughs> I don't know if it's like feeding out of it or playing with that thing or what, but it's, it just kind of got it in its mouth. <laughs> Anyways, I guess I kind of want to play the waiting game real quick. Wait for the critters to get cleared from quarantine over here. That way we can move them to uh, other enclosures. I don't- Yeah, that, okay, that one's not done yet. Looks like we have to wait for the green bar to go down. If I'm looking at that correctly. So that, that, that looks like it might take quite a while there, you guys. And I don't know what this little thing over here, like, going left to right, left to right. I don't know what that's doing there, but... Yeah, I think I'm just going to wait for it to both turn to daytime, as well as wait for all the critters to clear from the quarantine area. So, once they're all cleared, I guess we can move them to their respective enclosures and get the uh, first bit of this gold star done. So, after that, we can move on to increasing the average habitat species overall welfare at 90%. And then place buildings to increase guest happiness. And then receive zoo inspection report. Ooh. That's, that's honestly kind of making me nervous. Getting an inspection report with an overall star rating of 2.5. We're currently at 4, so... I guess the only thing that's kind of holding us back is that we have no marketing going on right now. But I assume because we're still in the tutorial phase, the uh, the old woman is probably going to teach us on how to, how to actually use the marketing and stuff a little later. Maybe on a different scenario or something like that. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe on this one too. But maybe that's going to help out our star rating significantly once that's, you know, not zero stars. But like I said, going to pause the recording. Just kind of play the waiting game. And I'll see you guys here in just a bit. I spot a balloon. Time to pop. <laughs> it was already up in the air, so that wasn't too mean, right? I'll see you guys here in a bit, though.